West Virginia's new coach, Darren DeVries, continues to try to fill out his roster, and he's doing so through the transfer portal. There are a few new names that have popped up on the portal since we last saw you, and we're going to talk about it right after this word from our sponsor. This episode of Hoops from the Hills is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive, where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal right up front on any new or pre-loved vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC, Buick, and Subaru, the Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory across West Virginia at DutchMillerAuto.com, or you can come in person today to the home of friends and family pricing, only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store near you. What is up? My name is Coos. My name is Mountaineer Paul. And we present to you Hoops from the Hills. What is going on out there, everybody? We thank you for joining us for another episode of Hoops from the Hills. Today, we are talking about some new names that are, are popping up on the transfer portal visit list, or at least guys that West Virginia might have an, have an interest in to come over to play for Coach DeVries and the Mountaineers. We're also going to talk about the new coaching hire that, that DeVries has added to the staff. Well, Paul, there are still some names popping up on the visit list and on the interest list, I guess you call it, for the West Virginia Mountaineer team. Some guys we're going to talk about today. Um, who's the first player that comes to your mind that we haven't already discussed that we want to talk to these fine folks about today? You know, it's there's a lot of guys. I would probably say with I would probably say maybe Jimerson at St. Louis is a guy who 15 mm -hmm. points a game, an absolute marksman from three, uh, really athletic guy as well, similar to Connor Hickman, Hickman from Bradley. If you haven't checked either one of those guys out, they're the same sort of profile. You can see what direction Coach DeBreeze is going in with that player. Basically needs somebody that can really shoot it has the size to defend in the Big 12, uh, you know, because at the end of the day, it's about length and size in the Big 12. Effort can make up for a lot. Joe Toussaint, you know, uh, guys like, excuse me, guys like that are indicative of the kind of player that you can win with at a smaller size, but mm -hmm. they have, have a ton of effort. So you, you really need guys that have length and size in the Big 12. Uh, to make that that way, if they're playing just like you know, whatever energy is you would consider average, like the average player, mm -hmm. they can win with that. Because if you're deficient in that area, then the player has to give more than average all the time. So really, it's all about fitting that player's size, prototype, and profile. Uh, then Gibson Jimerson is a guy that really fits that at St. Louis, and and obviously, you know, obviously they play a ton of power teams in, the, in St. Louis, and um. You know, Creighton is a team they play a bunch. You know, they play Gonzaga a lot, so they're always playing a really tough competition. Uh, and, and he's a he's a kid I'm a big fan of. Hopefully, we can land. We're trying to get a lot of these kids from the 12th to the 14th, and, and there are a lot of names that we don't know about yet that are going to be locked into that date. Uh, and, and there are some that we do and are going to know about soon. Yeah, and, and the guys we're talking about right now, for the most part, uh, have not scheduled visits yet, uh, other than a couple, and and that's like you mentioned, the, the weekend of the twelfth and fourteenth. But as of, as far as I know, J uh, Jimerson has not scheduled a visit. Do, do you know what, whether he has or not? No, he has not yet that I know of. But I do know that they're working on him. Uh, he's a guy that's got a ton of opportunities, and so basically, it's been told to me like this: the donors are on standby. Right. And then they can basically afford to pay for any player, which is it's, it's how it is. Uh, it doesn't sound great, but that's how it is. Uh, I guess we're just programmed as old school college fans to think that that's bad to say, but it's not. Yeah. Today. Uh, but they're on standby, you know, and so they can they can compete at the money level for anybody. So if the money's the same and it's just old school recruiting again, basically, and so you're still going to lose out to some schools, the Michigans, the the North Carolinas, the Kansases of the world, you know. So, but if it's a player they really want, 
they, they, the coach DeVries, from what I've been told, has the donors on standby to push. So if it's somebody, the top two things that they need right now, point guard, and big man, right? So mm -hmm. uh, those are the top two uh, players types you're going to see that really push for going forward. Got a guy like Okani from UIC. That's somebody they're really going to push for. I'm just going to tell you. Uh, they really love the kid. So he, And he's a guard. He can do both. He's a combo guard. He can play off the ball or he can play point. Uh, and, and he's a big kid. So, you know, they're really, you know, if you just look, at, you start to see a pattern of the length and size that they're trying to get. Uh, it seems like he's compensating well from a player profile standpoint from the Missouri Valley to the Big 12. Great point. Um, another guy that is on the list of that West Virginia has reached out to is Malik Dia from Belmont. He's a six foot nine inch forward, two hundred forty pounds. He's a sophomore. He, uh, I mean, he averaged a averaged sixteen point nine a game. Shot at thirty four percent from three, forty eight point eight percent from the floor. Uh, what do you know about what do you know about Malik Dia? Elite in all as he's elite in all aspects of the game. Uh, he's an incredible defender, uh, probably of the cook a cook level, somewhere in that range. Um, similar size and profile to a cook a cook as well, as far as an offensive player goes. Uh, he's certainly a better post presence, but as far as a shooting guy, kind of a bigger guy, a cook didn't get a chance to really show what he could really do for us last year. That's just my opinion. The, the heart thing really, unfortunately, hampered him. Uh, as far as from a physical exertion, he's a guy with an extremely high motor. Uh, and, and, and Dia is the same thing. Uh, this is the guy you push for. This is a guy that you outbid for. You know, this is a Jesse Edwards type signing, if you can get it. This is like, okay, cream of the, cream of the crop type of player that if you bring in, people are buzzing about it. You add this to a Tucker DeVries signing, uh, and, and people are really going to, have to take it to do the double take because mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you know, Belmont is a constant tournament tournament team. They're always in the tournament. They always play really tough outside competition. And, you know, even though Belmont got beat, I think in the first weekend, they, they were a really dangerous team last year. And he was the main reason for that. So you look at him and obviously has the length size uh, and, and probably had to gain just a little bit of weight, in my opinion, but overall fits the Big 12 from an athleticism, rim protection, and scoring standpoint. Now, there's another young man who West Virginia, I don't know if they've reached out to him yet, but he's he's a five-star transfer. His name is Liam Campbell. He's uh, Actually, he's not really he, – actually, he wouldn't really be considered a transfer. He would actually be a freshman. But he had initially signed a national letter of intent to go to USC as a four-star shooting guard. But with the coaching change there at USC, with infield leaving to go to SMU, he has gotten out of his national letter, letter of intent. And according to Jeff Cobb over at Blue Gold News, he actually was heavily recruited and was considering Drake before choosing to go to USC. So it'll be interesting to see. And here's what. Uh, Here's what on three had to say about Liam Campbell. It says Liam Campbell will not be headed to Los Angeles after all. The six foot four shooting guard out of OE High School in Idaho has requested to be released from his national letter of intent to USC and will reopen his recruitment. The news comes after former USC head coach Andy Enfield accepted the ongoing opening at SMU. And here is the announcement um, from, from the young man. It says, due to the announcement of Coach Enfield's departure, I have decided to request a release for my national letter of intent and reopen my recruitment, Campbell said in a statement to On3. Thank you to Coach Enfield, Capco, Mobley, Morris, Farmer, Karras, Sweats, and all the Trojan staff and family for wel welcoming me with open arms and believing in me. I will continue to put in the work and play with passion for the game I love and see where it takes me. I look forward to finding a good fit where I can develop as a player while keeping USC open as an option. The four-star senior committed to the Trojans in September and signed his NLI during the early period in November. He ultimately chose USC over St. Mary, Santa Clara, Utah State, Washington State, Stanford, and others. 
And according to Cobb, like I said, uh, Drake was on his list of teams that were, I guess, that he was highly considering. Uh, what are your thoughts on this young man out of USC potentially, or, or you know, freshman that was going to go to USC potentially uh, being an option? Yeah, they call him Baby Bird. You know, that's his nickname. So uh, after after Larry Bird, and he's 6'5", 180 pounds. So there's the length, there's the profile. Uh, you want to see some weight added there, some good muscle, which Mike Joe and the guys will take care of. Uh, and then you look at what does he do on the floor? Well, he's kind of got uh, what you would consider more of an old man's type game. He's a good athlete, but he, you know, he's got a little bit of a post game to him he can do, but it's all about the shooter for this guy. He's a good shooter. Um, and, you know, he loves that he can go from to his, either to his left or his right hand off the dribble, which is great. I love seeing that. Guys, that, personally, me, as I was a good shooter, but I always had to get to my left hand. In other words, if, if you were tossing me the ball, I love to catch it in my left and get it in a shooting pocket. Or if I was dribbling the ball, I would cross from right to left so I could pull up in that shooting pocket. Uh, this is a kid that can go either direction and pull up. And it's, you know, it's a skill you got to work on. He's got it already down. That puts him ahead, in my opinion, of a lot of players, his his type of player in college, because you can't just be a spot shooter running off screens unless it gets your Caitlin Clark, maybe. Uh, but in general, in, in college, you know, you get, you've got to be able to put the ball on the deck. So he can do that. Uh, and, and, he you know, as a defender, he's got he's got the motor and ability to do that as well. Um, certainly had an odd list of, of people on his uh, recruiting profile that he considered. Mm -hmm. uh, Drake being one of those, and that's the connection here. He's from Idaho, so you, you can you kind of worry a little bit about does he want to come all the way to this side of the coast? But at the end of the day, is it somebody they would reach out to? I'm sure the phone call has probably been made. Absolutely. I, I would imagine so. Um you would hope so anyway, right? Especially if Drake was on, you know, if if, if Coach DeVries felt like he had a shot at him before, uh, you would think he would definitely feel like he had a, felt like he had a shot at him now, now that he's at a Power 5 school. Um, the next name I want to talk about, Paul, is um, another Power 5 young man, Maryland transfer Jamie Kaiser Jr., uh, who actually – it's my understanding had West Virginia on his final list of schools before going to Maryland this past year. Uh, here are the schools that have reached out to him so far in the portal. Vanderbilt, Mark Byington's new team, Virginia Tech, Butler, West Virginia, Pitt, DePaul, Mississippi State, Oregon State, Boston College, Ohio, George Washington, St. Bonaventure, Richmond, Davidson, Charleston, Penn, Columbia, Marshall, and Old Dominion. Kaiser, a six foot six inch freshman wing, appeared in 33 games, averaging 4.4 points and two rebounds in his freshman year at Maryland. What are your thoughts on Jamie Kaiser? Man, I, you know, this kid is impressive. Six foot six, 205 pounds. Uh, he's an, you know, Alexandria, Virginia. So that's really close to us. But he played that senior season similar to another kid we saw. Unfortunately, in Tank, leave to go play for IMG, played there his senior year, which is the best of the best, and, and gave him a much wider known profile. He was heavily recruited as a quarterback out of high school by Pitt and others. Wow. So he's a multi athlete. You know, he could, he, he's the kind of guy like, you know, you know, you could possibly play and put him on your football roster. Uh, and if he went to Pitt, maybe that's something. I know this is a West Virginia video, but. That might be something Pitt tries to sell him because he's definitely he, he's definitely on their radar as well. His dad played at Slippery Rock, which is their PA. Um, you know, I, I think personally that could play a, a part in this as well. That Pennsylvania connection, but generally speaking, this is a guy that averaged four points a game at Maryland last year. Uh, didn't quite keep, get on with the Terrapins and their style of play. Personally, looking into it. They play a really up tempo, fast style there, and I think this kid just didn't fit into that. Uh, he, you know, the kind of offense we play at West Virginia with DeBreeze now, with much fitting, much better, and who better to learn behind than Tucker DeBreeze? Great point, man. Great point. But uh, I mean, there are so the main point here is this, and and 
let's not even forget. I was going to say the main point is there are even some power five guys that DeVries may have a shot at, but, and we can't forget the, the Drake guys who are still, you know, Overton, Enright, uh, at and right. I mean, these guys are still an option. There are some rumblings that Overton might be off the table. I have, you know, you or I neither one have been able to confirm that yet, but, you know, he's still trying to bring some of those guys into the fold as well. And and these are some really talented guys who, you know, who helped lead Drake to a, to a really, really good year. So uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, how many of those guys come over with, with Tucker. Um, what are your, are you, have you heard any updates at all on any of those guys? Yeah. At, yes. At and Wright's definitely going to visit the weekend of the 12th and 14th, as long as somebody else doesn't come along and knock him on the contention. You mentioned Overton. We thought he was going to visit the 12th or the 14th. It sounds people were saying he's canceled that. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure it's it's a possibility. We'll see. Um, listen, guys, don't get too hung up on any one player during this process. It's an X man up mentality. If Overton is gone, we've just got to hope that we can get right and right and Tucker, and that's still a pretty good core of players to teach other players the Drake system. Right? Mm-hmm. Certainly, Overton would be crucial to that. Um, but I wouldn't count him out of this yet, you know, but just remember at the end of the day, guys, some of these guys are from certain parts of the country and home is home, you know, and, you know, look at Xavier Bosley. When I was able to report on him coming to West Virginia, one of the biggest reasons he told me he stayed was home was home. And he turned down a substantial amount of money in UK more than West Virginia was able to offer him to do that. So it's not always about the money, you know, and sometimes when you get up to a certain amount, um, you're happy and, and, and you're able to provide for whoever you want to provide for, whether it be yourself or your family. Uh, I have no inside knowledge with this, but I'm assuming that's probably playing a part here. Yeah, great point. Um, and I did hear too, Paul, as you were talking, this came back to my mind. I was listening to, a, I think it was a podcast the other day, and I don't remember which one because um, I listened to dozens. But the fans are that are concerned about Overton not coming to, on a visit. This podcast host made a great point. He may not need to. He already knows who the coach is. He knows the system. He knows who some of his teammates are going to be. I mean, he can look at the campus on a video if he needs to. I mean, you know, Ren Baker took the AD job without coming to the campus. I don't think Darren DeVries – came to campus until he had already signed his paperwork. I mean, with the technology out there today, you can get a tour of the campus and a tour, I mean, heck, even a tour of the city without ever stepping foot in it, you know. Uh, the facilities, you know, people can give you videos or, or shoot pictures of the facilities, all that stuff. So, you know, I don't think him canceling that one visit is necessarily a deal breaker. Um, so I don't want to get too hung up on it. Do you, is that your thoughts as well? I think it's, I think definitely you have to go in that direction with it. Um, you know, I personally think it's not a good omen. You know, if you'd ask me to put my real thoughts and feelings out there about it, I don't like it. Um, but like you said, he knows Coach DeVries. He knows the teammates. It's all about how much did he like him or love those guys. Uh, and does Morgantown fit him or what he wants in life, you know? Uh, some people really think West Virginia is like, where? I'm going, where? I ain't going all the way to West Virginia. Like, it's seriously, a, it's a stigma. So, uh, you know, we're just having to educate somebody about that yesterday. Like, they were talking about, this is off subject, but basically they were telling me that we're in BFE and we don't know what an in-state rivalry is. And then I looked at it, and Morgantown is closer to Huntington than uh, where he was from was to the rival of his state, you know? So it's just that kind of rid- ridiculousness that people think like we're some way out there, like we're literally an hour from Pittsburgh, uh, probably closer to the biggest city than some of you are. So yeah, it's ridiculous, but that's as far it plays a part in. Well, absolutely. Yeah. There's right. definitely some stigmas out there. Next, let's move on to – well, before we do, Paul, is there any other players you want to talk about before we move on to the coaching conversation? Um, I, You know, I, I think we're pretty well good. 
I don't forget about Omaha Bill. You some guys like that that I really do think are are still in the mix here. Uh, and like I said, you know, I've been I'm hearing a lot about um, Coach Reese has an ex- excellent plan in place, and just like we trust Ren, we need to catch, trust Coach DeBreeze on this. Uh, there are people that know that, that say he's really got a good plan. So, great point. Um, the news broke, I guess it was yesterday as we record this, maybe two days ago now. I can't remember, can't keep track. But anyway, Darren DeVries made his first official hire as part of the staff. His name is Nick Norton. And I'm not going to do a screen share here, but I will read it. Uh, an article from WV Sports Now. Well, I'll go ahead and do a share. That might make it easier for you, for everybody watching. That way they can read along with us here. Just try to look over the ads. Uh, it doesn't cover up the article, so it's all good. But it says, Western University men's coach Darren DeVries has named Nick Norton, and there's a picture of Norton. Very young guy. As an, as an assistant coach, director of player development for the Mountaineers. A native of Bloomington, Illinois, Norton spent hit the last three seasons on DeVries' staff at Drake helping the Bulldogs to an 80-26 and 26 record with two NCAA tournament appearances and two Missouri Valley Conference titles. Nick is a hard worker who brings great enthusiasm and tremendous energy to our basketball program, DeVries said. He always has a great rapport with our players and has a strong basketball IQ. Nick fits our basketball staff and our program extremely well. Norton joined the Drake staff during the 21-22 season as assistant director of operations and was elevated to director of operations prior to the 22-23 season. Last season, he was promoted to assistant coach, director of player development. Norton began his collegiate career at UAB, making 97 starts for the Blazers. He was named All-Conference USA third team as a sophomore. Goes into his kind of his playing stats there. He transferred to Drake in 18, averaged 14 points, 5.9 assists, and 4.1 rebounds. Before an injury, ended his collegiate career. His father, Randy, is the head women's coach at UAB. Nick and his wife, Caroline, have one son, Campton. Um, and he did play in the G League for a small, short amount of time, it says there as well. So, uh, Paul, what are your initial thoughts on Nick Norton coming over to be part of this staff? Oh, it's great. You know, you got to love to have a staff member along with Coach DeVries. And uh, this is a guy that is considered to be really, really young. Uh, I think he's 25. Uh, right around Jordan McCabe's age, as a matter of fact. Um, I, I think it's a great hire. You know, looking into it a little bit, uh, he was really integral to a lot of the recruiting there and um, and also played ball in college. So, uh, and he's got, you know, one of the highest assist totals ever in the history of the school, 16 in a game, which is pretty incredible. So you think he's going to have a big effect on the guards? And he was just, he was playing in the G League as of, like five years ago. So this is a guy that can still lace him up and go toe to toe with anybody on the core on the team, probably. Um, So, you you know, you'd have to think he probably gets, he's going to get out there and scrimmage in the early parts of um, this, this spring and summer uh, until we get a full roster. He's probably going to have to. Um, So it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. But I I do think he's a great, great hire. Um, Unfortunately, you know, uh, we do have some other news that hasn't worked out for Kester Brees on the hiring part. Yeah, and we'll get to that in one second, but I want to bring something up on Norton real quick that, that I thought about as you were talking. Um, it seems to me that Norton coming over could mean that Jordan McCabe is not going to stay because it seems to me like they might be – coaches from a similar mold and coach the same position. What do you think? I, I think it's it's possible, yeah, for sure. Uh, also, something I was told is the GM role. Uh, be looking for that to be filled anytime. It's, they're supposed to be making an announcement on that soon. Um, so we'll see if that's, in with, in with that's going to happen, but it's supposed to be really soon. Obviously, the staff is probably the number one priority, even above recruiting at the moment. Well, they're being done simultaneously, but probably a lot of energy is being expended into building the staff. It has to be. Uh, and, and you get a, you get a win with Norton, but you lose, unfortunately, one and maybe two. Apparently, Richter is still available. Um, 
but unfortunately Ostrom, who most people think was the backbone, kind of his right hand guy along with Richter, they're like they were right there with each other on that staff. And if you want to know how how much people want those guys, guys like Dusty May and and uh, the new Vanderbilt coach uh, Biden is they already got Ostrom, so uh, which which apparently was a surprise is what I was told. It was a surprise to coach DeVries that he didn't stay with him. But like we talked about off camera, Nashville, Morgantown, pretty, you know, Nashville's pretty badass. It is. I've been there a couple of times. Uh, can't wait to go back actually. Um, but yeah, to me, when you look at building the roster versus recruiting, I mean, the, the players, it'll make it easier to recruit once you have your staff because they want to know who they're playing for. They want to know, you know, because every coach has got different assignments, different positions they're teaching, coaching. These guys want to know who, who who am I going to be spending my time with? Who am I going to be at practice with every day? Who am I going to be in the film room with? Position If they do position rooms in basketball, I'm not sure. But, who who you know, who am I going to be working with on a daily basis? So, to me, you almost have to make that your highest priority because you – how do you recruit guys when you don't even have a staff yet? You know what I mean? Absolutely. That's a great point. The only other only other news really is, you know, since we've been on last, Kerr Creasel went into the portal. Looks like he's not coming back. Um, not a huge shock. What I am shocked about is the fact we've only had two guys enter the portal, him and Seth Wilson. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, more will be coming. Uh, I don't know. You know, there, these conversations are happening little by little. Uh, I, I think, you know, there's a few of these players that would have to transfer down. I mentioned that a few times. And they're probably going to have to be, for lack of a better term, fired. Uh, and it's unfortunate. It's the way things are today. Uh, but, I, you know, I do think we need to hopefully keep some of them. You know, two to three of the guys I really feel will be valuable to this year's team. Uh, and and I really hate bringing this subject up because it's such a nasty subject for me. But you know, if, if I had to pick, it's probably uh, obviously Noah, Pat, Kerr's gone, uh, and Kobe probably be the three I would keep, uh, and all oh, of Uh I would keep him absolutely, especially after he's done so much offseason work. I just think he's got a chance to be a star, a stud. I really do. So hopefully they keep him. Uh, and getting a first-hand look of what he's capable of right now, you know, in Morgantown. But, um, you know, and then, and then, and then, you know, if other guys want to stay, then they're going to have to, from what I was told, they're going to have to be on par with what the numbers are. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, right? Yep. And for what, uh, for those of you who don't know what Paul might be referring to with Ophrey of A, he's put on 29 pounds, apparently, is what we've read. In the off season, so he's putting putting in a lot of work in the weight room, getting bigger, stronger, which was the one really the one big negative towards him. He only weighed about a buck fifty, buck sixty, something like that when he got to Morgantown. Very skinny guy, and he just wasn't physically ready to face a Big Twelve gauntlet week in week out. But he's getting there. He's doing what he has to do, putting in the work, putting in the time. And to me, that shows me something. It shows me that he cares. It shows me he has the work ethic to do what needs to be done. And I love his game. Paul and I have talked about this off camera multiple times, even on camera. I think Oprey to me is one of the most talented guys on that was was one of the most talented guys on that roster from a pure skill standpoint. Very talented, much more athletic than he looks, uh, and even than he plays. Sometimes he doesn't always play athletic. I guess for lack of a better term, but he's he's athletic. He's he's more athletic than he than he lets on when he's out there sometimes and. He can shoot it. Uh, he can guard. He just needed to put on weight. And I think now that he's doing that, you know, he may fit. You know, I th- to me personally, I think his style of ball fits what what uh, Darren DeVries wants to do. But what do you think he does? There's no, there's no question about it. Yeah, yeah, he does. He he is a to me, he is similar to a Joe Alexander, you know, somebody like that. Like, he's got that kind of athletic ability from a jumping perspective. That guy can almost hit his head off the rim. Uh, so he can jump, definitely. 
Uh, and if you can jump, that's a good thing in basketball. Um, I don't know, haven't seen enough, or I haven't seen his tape in a while to know or remember about his lateral movement. But, you know, I know he's got a great jump shot, a pretty good-looking jump shot. Listen, he scored double figures, guys, in, in a couple games this year. Uh, the very last game he played in, he scored double figures uh, as far as before the all the players started coming and going, like in the mm-hmm. nine, I'm going to say game nine or ten. Uh, you know, and he really looked good in that game. I felt like he was – I think he scored 18 points or 11 points or eight, somewhere in there. I felt like he was starting to come on, and then he never played again, <laughs> you know, which I understand why. It was a lot of pressure there, and, and unfortunately, it's just how it is. But at the end of the day, I think he's got a shot to be really good, and it would be a big mistake to let him go. I agree. I mean, he he was. I think they were starting to get in the Big Twelve schedule, and the physicality of the Big Twelve was just. Yeah, you know, I guess in Allard's eyes was just too much for Ofrey. Uh, you know, I'll leave that up to up to you guys to decide whether you agree with that or not. I I personally would have liked to have seen him in games more, but uh, it is what it is. But uh, nonetheless, uh, Paul, I don't really have anything else on the docket. Do you? No, sir. We appreciate everybody tuning into the show. Uh, don't forget to like us, share us out, comment, leave us your thoughts on what you think about some of these guys that are being looked at in the portal. Which ones would you like to see added? And let us know what you think about the new coaching hire as well. Uh, we will be, you know, there'll be a lot more shows coming from us here in the next, you know, as we get through the off season and through the portal and the recruiting and the whole bit. So stay tuned uh, for more Who's from the Hills. And we're done.